This here's a Huawei MateBook E. It's a two-in-one, meaning it's a Windows tablet that like most tablets these days can be used with a keyboard case. Given how Android tablets and iPads are moving towards a more desktop-ish experience these days, is getting an actual desktop experience on a tablet, aka getting a Windows tablet like the MateBook E, a good idea? What are the pros and cons associated with picking one up? Let's find out in today's video. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech, and if you do end up liking what you see here, thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon, and let's get started. Starting with the pros, first off, the display. The MateBook E has an amazing one. It's a 12.6 inch panel, 16 by 10 OLED. It's supposed to have a 600 nit peak brightness, so plenty bright. I've been using this for a few weeks now, and I gotta say the viewing experience has been excellent. The resolution here is 2560 by 1600 pixels, making for a 240 pixels per inch pixel density. Now that's right up there with the Tab Ultras and the iPad Pros. Text appears crisp and it's also pretty color accurate with 100% DCI-P3 coverage. So Photoshop, for example, works great for it. The second generation M Pencil support also comes in more than handy here. The latency is just two milliseconds. So if you finally cut something, sketch or take down notes, this is pretty useful. Now, it pairs and charges via being placed on top of the tablet. It has 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity and there are a couple of tip options to see what works best for you. Initially, I was wary about palm rejection. These bezels, they're just so damn thin, but Huawei has done really good. I could hold it like this or even jot down notes with my palm on screen and it caused no issues whatsoever. Now, talking about bezels, let's talk form factor. The MateBook E, the tablet at least, it's got a 90% screen to body ratio. It's just eight millimeters thick and weighs in a little more than 700 grams. Now that's lesser than some of the handheld consoles I own. Of course, it's not gonna be great if you wanna constantly hold it in hand. 700 grams is still too heavy for that. But to occasionally pick it up and do something, it's not really cumbersome. Now the build quality is also a major plus here. We have glass to both the front and back with metal all around and that's kind of curved so as to not cut into the palm. While on that topic, let me quickly show you what's on the sides. In the landscape orientation to the right, we have a USB Type-C port. This is Thunderbolt 4 with display out. You can connect the MateBook E to an external monitor or say an eGPU and play actual AAA games. Up top, we have the volume keys and here's where the pencil charges. Now to the left, you have a fingerprint scanner that's built into the power button. It works with Windows Hello and is pretty quick. There's also a 3.5 millimeter combo jack here. And finally to the bottom, you get the pogo pins for that keyboard expansion. I really like how there's no notch or cutout for the selfie camera. The MateBook E sports an eight megapixel selfie shooter that's better than what you generally see on Windows laptops. Right next to it is a privacy indicator LED to show you when that camera is on. This camera can do full HD video at up to 60 FPS and it's pretty clear. Another advantage are the microphones. There are four and, well, let me just cut to a sample to show you guys better. This is 1080p footage captured via the MateBook E and it's the inbuilt microphones that are picking this up. Sounds pretty good. This is weird zoom in when shooting 1080 I have no idea why this happens. It isn't any software. I can zoom in this much via software. I can't really zoom out. So this is something that's quite confusing to be honest. There's also a 13 megapixel camera to the back. The fact that you get a rear camera on Windows barely makes its way to the Pro's column. Barely. Talking about barely, sneaking its way onto Pro's is performance. I say sneaking because you don't get the latest 12 gen Intel here, but you do get 11 gen core i3, i5 and i7 options. My unit here is the 1130 G7, the i5. I've spent enough time with the i7 on a different product. These are good CPUs and they are more than sufficient for regular work, you know, browsing, spreadsheets, taking down notes, putting together presentations. Huawei also happens to have done well with the cooling. There is a not too noisy fan on the inside. Now this is the MateBook E under full load. They have vents here and they are pretty well hidden. Now this is a Windows machine with laptop internals after all. So it does get hot if you're running at full throttle. But for me, if I'm gonna be doing something intense, then I'm gonna probably have it in this setup with the keyboard and all that. But when I hold it in hand with almost all my use cases, it never got hot enough to be uncomfortable. Also the quad speakers here, even at about 50%, they can more than drown out any fan noise. The media experience is actually quite excellent. And with that said and done, it's time to talk cons. The glass back is cool and all, but here's the issue. Huawei's given it a matte finish and it's a fingerprint magnet. It's almost impossible to keep it clean. Now, if you're thinking, oh, shut up, you can just throw a case on it. Well, you can't do that now, can you? Because this is the way it slots in with the keyboard. So you need to place the tablet so that the pogo pins actually connect. 
and having a case will hinder it. So you're gonna have to use it naked whenever you use it as a tablet. Now here, I really love Samsung solution, having the back part separate from the keyboard so that you don't, you know, when you need the keyboard, cool, but if you're just gonna use it as a tablet, you still get a stand to prop it up and also some protection for the back, extra grip and all that. Now the next con on this list, I feel this is the biggest one, the IO or the lack thereof. Now, of course, you don't get into a Windows tablet and expect Type-A ports, HDMI or Ethernet, and talking about which, you don't actually need Ethernet with this one because you have Wi-Fi 6 support and it's a good chip. I easily got more than gigabit speeds wirelessly, but micro SD would have been nice. Or at the very least, having an extra Type-C port so that I didn't find myself having to choose between storage and charging. Now, given the form factor, the storage is not swappable. That's understandable. So you choose between 128, 256, and 512 gigs of storage, 816 gigs of RAM when you buy it. And that's what you're gonna have to live with. So wanting to add a portable drive makes sense, but you can't do that when you're charging. I mean, you can, but then you're gonna have to get yourself a dongle or a dock, which is not very convenient. And you usually choose something like this for the convenience factor. So I would have really loved to see an extra Type-C port at the very least. Now, this would have been a less of an issue if the battery life was great. This is not a knock on Huawei, the battery life is actually good here for a Windows tablet, but the keyword is Windows tablet. Windows isn't as power efficient as Android or iPad OS, so you're gonna have to reach for that charger more often than not. With typical day-to-day -day use, I found myself getting four to six hours with mixed kind of usage, and that's where this whole issue comes up. Now the next issue is again not specific to the MateBook Key but in general with keyboard case add-on form factors. Unlike with the laptop, the top is what is heavy here so you need an actual flat surface to type on. Keeping it on your lap doesn't really work. The keyboard itself is actually pretty cool. The keys are well spaced out and it has 1.3 millimeters travel. Personally, I would have loved to see a backlight on this but it's still very usable, no complaints. So these are basically all the pros and cons of the MateBook E. It starts at $26.99 AED and for that price, what Huawei has on offer does make sense. But the big question is, do you need a Windows hybrid? And the answer to that, sadly, with most people, probably not. Because if your workload is light enough, then you'd probably be better off with an Android tablet or an iPad. You get better portability, battery life, but if your workload is heavy, then you're gonna, you know, say for example, you're gonna wanna do a lot of video editing or a game, then the power available, the limited storage in the I.O. would mean a proper laptop would work better. But if your requirements are just right, your workload is heavier than what you can get out of a mobile OS, but it's not heavy enough to warrant going all out laptop, you would like the convenience, the form factor here, then the MateBook Key is an excellent option to consider and that is my take on it. What do you think about the MateBook Key and Windows tablets in general? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we are at the end of this video. Thumbs up, thumbs down, based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4ETech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.